But when these polls like the Wall Street Journal one land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states. That... No, he's not losing in all the battleground all but one. states. He's coming up. That's just a lie, but she seems a little testy, doesn't she? All right, so Dr. Jill Biden, she's a doctor, you know. Although if you're ever over at the White House or on the South Lawn at the Easter egg hunt like yesterday and you have an injury of some sort, let's say you fall. Let's say you're you're chasing around the Easter bunny there on the South Lawn and you fall and twist your ankle and you're in horrible pain and you need some first aid. Here's the problem. Dr. Jill Biden cannot help you. She would she she will be as useful to you as I would be. In fact, I might be more useful. Because I've had basic person. See, she is not that kind of doctor. And yet she insists that you call her doctor, which tells you a lot. Anyway, Dr. Jill Biden appeared on CBS News this morning, the morning show. And she was asked about the problem with the polls. Specifically, this is something that we've been telling you about on a regular basis, how in the battleground states right now, Joe Biden is underwater. He's losing in every single one of those states based on the latest rounds of polls. In fact, there's a brand new poll just yesterday from the Wall Street Journal that that reinforces this. Well, here was Jill Biden's reply. But when these polls like the Wall Street Journal one land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states. No, he's not losing in all the battleground states. He's coming up and he's um, even or doing better. So, Mm. you know what? Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices. Mm -hmm. It's obvious that Joe will win this election. All right. So that's just a lie, but she seems a little testy, doesn't she? She's the first lady of the United States. She should be really happy. She doesn't have much of a job, right? But yet, why is she so defensive? Why is she so angry? Listen to this for a second, because at the very beginning, there's two parts to this that are really, really revealing. We'll start with the first part of it, her direct response to the polls. But when these polls, like the Wall Street Journal one, land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states. No, he's not losing in all the battleground all but states. He's coming up and he's um, even or doing better. So, All right. So he is not losing. He's coming up. Um, Coming up on who? It's like if, if he's coming up, that means he was down. And if he's down and coming up, that means he is currently beneath Trump, who is above. Otherwise, who else is he coming up on? So if he is beneath and below Donald Trump in the polls, even if you maintain he's coming up, he is still, in fact, what's the word? Below Donald Trump. And in a poll, if one person is above and one person's below, even if they're coming up, but if they are below, that means, oh, God, there's a word for it. What is it? Losing. It means they're losing. It means he's absolutely losing. No, he's not. No, no, he's not. (laughs) That voice. He's coming up or he's even or winning or something. Well, we hate to fact check the first lady, but we're going to have to do that. But first, I do want to ask a very basic question, because seeing Jill Biden on the set of a television news show made you wonder, why is she doing these interviews? Like, this is campaign season, man. We're like six, seven months away from Election Day. And you would think that Biden would be doing a bunch of, I mean, that's a friendly atmosphere, right? CBS News, are you kidding? With Gail King, Oprah's best friend there doing the questioning, it's going to go well for you, Joe. Why don't you show up? I mean, remember the last time you were in a television studio giving a live interview? It was again an MSNBC with Nicole Wallace. Are you kidding? It doesn't get easier than this. You're going to get nothing but softballs. Let's see how Joe Biden comported himself there in this setting. Like I said, I'm going to be down there congratulating you. I said I'd be a president for every American, whether they voted for me or not. Well, and and the ones that didn't vote for your bills, but run on them. That's right. (laughs) Mr. President, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Don't go anywhere. It's a very exciting day around here. Um, We'll have reaction and analysis to everything we just heard from the president. We'll be back after. Yeah. The last time Joe Biden did a live in studio interview, he just sort of up and got up and wandered aimlessly across the set. Look at him. I almost expected him to wander back behind her in this shot. Look, what is he doing? Where is he going? 
This is why they don't let him out. This is why he's not allowed to do live television interviews. That was less than a year ago, and he was less coherent then than he is now. But let's get to the fact check. Now, you just heard Joe Biden, uh, with in no uncertain terms, demand that Joe Biden is not losing in the polls. He's losing in all the battleground states. That- no, he's not losing in all the battleground all states. He's coming up, and he's... Um, a- even or doing better. So. All right. So let's look at the Wall Street Journal poll. It hit last night. And Fox News was nice enough to graphically break down each one of the states, the battleground states. Pennsylvania, Trump 47, Biden 44. That would be, uh, well, that would be Biden losing by three points. All right. Michigan, that'd be Trump 48 and Biden 45. That would be, uh, that'd be Biden losing by three points. Okay. Arizona though. Arizona is Trump 47 and Biden 42. Okay. So that's Biden losing by five points. I'm sure there's one of these states. Uh, Georgia, it's Trump 44, Biden 43. That's only Biden losing by one point. What the hell is going on, Georgia? Seriously, what is happening there? Uh, Nevada is Trump 48, Biden 44. That's Biden losing by four points. North Carolina, whoo, That's a bloodbath. Can we say bloodbath? I always forget the rules. Are we allowed to say bloodbath? North Carolina is Trump 49, Biden 43. That's Trump by six points. Wisconsin. Oh, there you go. Wisconsin is tied at 46 points. He's coming up. He's coming up. Interestingly, though, on the Wisconsin poll, Yesterday was the Wisconsin primary, the Democrat primary for Joe Biden, uh, something that is a completely meaningless vote, right? No one cares. Biden's already got the nomination. There's no one really running against him because the Democrats who love democracy wouldn't allow anybody on the ballot to run against him. And yet yesterday in Wisconsin, in that Democrat primary, 40,000 Democrats went out of their way to vote for what basically is tantamount to uncommitted. They had a line there on the ballot, similar to in Nevada, when Nikki Haley lost to anybody but Nikki Haley. Uh, They went out at 40,000 Democrats, went out of their way in Wisconsin yesterday to check the box that said none of the above. Now, I don't know how Wisconsin's going to end, but I can assure you that Joe Biden cannot afford to lose 40,000 Democrats, let alone independent swing voters in Wisconsin. But more importantly, uh, this is just an outlier. This is one state, uh, one poll, excuse me, Wall Street Journal. And if you look at the bottom here, it says 600 registered voters, right? Listen, we do a lot of poll talk and we're going to be doing a lot of poll talk between now and Election Day. And, you know, I tell you, you should really just look at state polls. If you're looking at polls at all, you should look at state polls because that's how we elect a president, not national polls. The state polls are much more important. And also uh, you should look at polls that that count likely voters. All right. Why is that? See, this poll, Wall Street Journal is just registered voters, not likely voters. Why do I recommend you only look at a poll or really take great gravity in a poll that says likely voters? Here's why. Uh, The polling people, they, they sort of ask you questions to see how committed you are as a voter. That's what changes you from a registered voter to a likely voter. You're a likely voter if you voted in the last election or in the last couple of elections. You're a likely voter if you demonstrate to the person who's taking the polling questions that you are incredibly committed and eager and enthusiastic to vote this November. That's a likely voter. Registered voter means you registered and that's it. You you don't know what your voting history. You could have never voted for any president before in your entire life, and you're going to be counted in this poll as a registered voter. See, likely voter means that you are motivated and you're going to show up. Ask yourself something. Between the Trump voters and the Biden voters, which group do you think is willing to walk over broken glass and hot burning coals to vote for their candidate this November? That Wisconsin number, 4646. In fact, all of these numbers for Joe Biden, it might be real. It might be real. But something tells me that his voters are not quite as motivated and not quite as enthusiastic about their choice than the ones for Donald Trump. Why do I think that? Well, let's break down this poll. Do you approve or disapprove of the job Joe Biden is doing as president? Look at the strongly approve line. That's the top line there. The total across all the states averages out to 17%. The best he's doing right now is in Wisconsin where it's 20%. So 
Twenty percent of Wisconsin voters strongly approve of Joe Biden's job versus 47 percent strongly disapprove in Wisconsin. That also, by the way, the 47 percent number matches the total across all the battleground states. That's what I mean by people. Yeah, sure, I'll vote for Biden, but I'm not happy about it. I don't approve of him. And this is a very interesting election because for the first time that I can remember, <laughs> because the last time I think was 130 years ago, uh, we have a former president running for president again. So not only can we ask the question, do you approve of Joe Biden's job as president? But we can ask those same people, did you approve of Donald Trump's job as president? And let's look at those numbers. That's the second uh, group of numbers on the bottom of this page. So strongly approve for Biden, it's 17 points. For Trump, it's 32 points, almost double. So the voters right now in these battleground states said, who do you strongly approve of as president, Biden or Trump? By a factor of nearly two to one, people strongly approve of Trump. And then when you move to the disapprove number, it's not quite as stark, but it's pretty st stark. Strongly disapprove of Biden is 47 points across the board. For Trump, it's 39 points. Uh, that's huge. By the way, if you average all of the state, uh, all of the answers, you've got strongly approve, somewhat approve, and strongly disapprove, somewhat disapprove. If you just lump all of them together, the total approval numbers for Biden are 38, disapprove 60. For Trump, Total approval, 51. Total disapproval, 47. In other words, he's actually got a plus four right now in approval versus disapproval from voters who are ready to vote today. So again, I tell you those numbers just to sort of convey that even if Biden has numbers in the 43, 42, 44 range, they're not happy about voting for him. They're not enthused about voting for him. They're not motivated to vote for him. Now, uh, the numbers on the Wall Street Journal battleground numbers that I just showed you, uh, extrapolate that to numbers that we showed you last week. This is the average of all those polls at Real Clear Politics. If you look at the bottom here where it says battlegrounds across the board, Wisconsin, Trump up 1.2, Arizona 5.4, Georgia 5.0, Michigan 3.7, Pennsylvania 1.0, North Carolina 5.0, Nevada 4.3. The fact is unequivocally based on yesterday's Wall Street Journal number and based on the real clear politics average of polls that we just looked at, Joe Biden is losing. He is losing across the board in every single one of the battleground states. In all the battleground states. No, he's not losing in all the battleground all states. He's coming up and he's um, even or doing better. So Now that's a lie. It's just a lie. And of course, none of the vaunted journalists there and fact checkers on the panel of the set of CBS News said, no, 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 wait a minute. None of them pushed back. None of them said, oh, I'm not going to let you get away with that. I'm sorry, we have to inform our viewers of the facts, you know, like they do to Republicans all the time when they're there. No, none of them did that. But the most telling thing about what Joe Biden said here in this segment came next. Watch. So, mm. you know what? Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, mm -hmm. it's obvious that Joe will win this election. All right. Now. Uh, what she didn't say there was Joe Biden's the better man. He's the better politician. He's got the better policies. He's the better leader in the country is better off than it was four years ago. And that's why he's going to win. Didn't say that. Why didn't he say that? Because they can't say it. I mean, they'll try to say it. But it's telling that his wife didn't even say that. His wife, who knows better, didn't say any of that. No, the only tactic they have right now is to demonize Donald Trump, demonize you, and terrify voters who are leaning toward Trump right now. And that's why she said, as soon as people start focusing and they see what the choice is, Joe will win. See what the choice is means, I know life is miserable for you right now, but you can't vote for Trump because he's a horrible man. And let me tell you exactly how that's going to manifest. We saw it over the last 24 hours. This is a big push now with the Democrats and with the media 
they're going to try to terrify everyone in this country and most significantly single women and suburban moms they're going to terrify them over abortion msnbc interviewed floridians i'm going to tell you about florida in a second and why florida is the focus but here's an example of the message that MSNBC and all of the water carriers in the media are putting out on behalf of Joe Biden and the Democrats. I've got a daughter, so I want to, you know, also I'm her advocate and now she's of age to vote too. So I'm hoping, you know, she exercises that right. But that, yeah, that's a big deal to, to both of us. Uh, that's abortion is the big deal to both of us. And um, this is identified as a Republican voter, by the way. I don't know. How Republican she is, actually, if this is all that matters. Because here's the thing. God, I'm a mother. I have a daughter. And this really motivates her to vote. You know, if I had a, well, I do have a daughter. If I was a mother and I was talking to my daughter about the issue of abortion and how it might motivate her behavior, I don't think I would just focus on make sure you vote for a Democrat who lets you kill the baby that you might have it, right? Maybe you should talk to her about the moral weight of the act of procreation. Maybe you should talk to her about behaving in a responsible manner and choosing certain demonstrations of physicality with the one that you love. Uh, save it for marriage. Uh, maybe you should talk to her about the sanctity of life and the fact that if you had exercised that choice, uh, my dear daughter, if I had exercised that choice, dear daughter, uh, 18 years ago, you wouldn't be here today. And maybe talk about the beautiful gift of life, about adoption if something horrible happens. Or maybe it can be to your daughter that, listen, I recognize that we're all sinners. I recognize that things happen. And if you do end up pregnant, I just want you to know unequivocally that as your mother, I will love you. I will embrace you. I will embrace that child. If you can't afford or have any ability to raise that child, I will help you raise that child, if not raise that child all by myself on your behalf. Would that be a motherly thing to do? And it looks like, I mean, I hate to judge from appearances, but it looks like this woman could probably afford a mouth to feed instead of just, you know, murdering it in the womb. So it's kind of a chilling, weird little segment here when they have these mothers say, yeah, 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 I need to make sure my daughter gets a right to kill my grandchild. But why is Florida so important? Well, they did the work over on ABC News on behalf of the Biden administration as well, and they delivered the message loud and clear on their nightly newscast. This is why Florida is in the spotlight. Now to the race for the White House, abortion rights front and center, and will it put the state of Florida in play? Tonight, President Biden blasting the state's new six-week abortion ban, one of the strictest in the country before many women know they're pregnant, the president calling it outrageous. Former President Trump on the campaign trail today saying suburban housewives like Trump. Rachel Scott in Wisconsin. Boy, that's a heck of a both sides description there, isn't it? Biden said this, and meanwhile, Trump said this. Really, David? Is that all both of them said? Well, he was right about Biden. That is all he's saying right now. It's all about abortion, 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 abortion. And they're claiming that they can flip Florida because of this new bill that's been signed into law, a six-week ban on abortions. Now, let's think this through for a minute. A couple of things about how they're trying to scare you and scare voters about this issue. If, in fact, the state of Florida now has this six weeks abortion ban in place, it's there because a governor who won by 22 points in the last election signed that bill into law. And by the way, that governor ran on a staunchly pro-choice platform. He said that if given this bill, he would sign it into law. It also made its way to the governor's desk because the state legislature in Tallahassee, overwhelmingly Republican, they wrote the bill, voted on it, and gave it to the governor. And of course, they're all there because the people of Florida wanted them there. And of course, they all ran on this issue too. So the reason that that's now the law in Florida is because the representatives, either in the governor or in the members of the legislature, they were put there to activate this law because the voters wanted them to do it. But the most important aspect of this entire fake lie that you just saw promulgated by ABC News, CBS News, and NBC News 
to try to change the conversation in this country about abortion instead of about all of the things that's actually plaguing the American people from crime to the economy to border security to national security issues. The reason why they're doing this, it's all based on a lie, is because that's all they've got. But the lie is so huge and so monumental because please, my friends, think this through with me for a minute. To buy their argument, you've got to think that the people of Florida are going to rise up and choose Joe Biden as their president because they're angry at their governor for signing in a new law. Can I ask you something, please? What can the president of the United States do about a state of Florida law? Vote for me and I'll get rid of that law that your governor signed. No, he can't do that. <laughs> He's the president. A president can't just cancel a state law. There's no mechanism for it in any way whatsoever. The only thing he could do is maybe vote in a new federal law that overrides these state laws, but he doesn't have the votes in the House or the Senate to do that, nor will he after this upcoming election. And oh, by the way, even if he did, then you've got a constitutional fight. It'll go to the Supreme Court. And I think we know what the Supreme Court has said about whether this is a state's rights issues or issue or not. That's already sort of the law of the land. So the entire argument here that we're hearing from the media is, that's it, Florida and other states have gone too far by listening to the people in those states and passing bans on abortion, and that's going to hand the presidency to Joe Biden, because as president, Joe Biden will not be able to do anything about those states. It's complete nonsense. And the fact that they are building their entire political narrative right now based on absolute nonsense and lies tells you well, it tells you they've got nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe the fear mongering. Guys, it's April 3rd. It's going to get so much worse. So much worse. <laughs>